I mean, she's like very stiff in her face, you know. Mm. But maybe that's just the way it is. Like, she's like a human, though. She started as human, and then like she forgot about her. Yeah, that's true. So she thinks right? she's alien. She has to. Are we good. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. We're live. Welcome back, everyone, on the stream. Everyone who's checking in, uh, whether it's now or post on to YouTube afterwards. Thank you. Welcome back to Post Credits. Obviously, this is a show where we talk about everything that happens in major movies, TV shows, and video games, and what we think is going to happen next or after the credits. Um, today, I'm joined by Denise. Hello. Welcome, oh. guys. For all those that got to see the episode last week, obviously, Dan Danny joined us, but kind of like the Star Wars Christmas special, that episode would now be impossible to find anywhere on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we did, we had some problems recording the audio with that. But no big no big issue there. It was just a teaser trailer for today's big meaty episode of getting into Endgame, which is what I want to talk about later today. But obviously we want to do pre-spoiler stuff beforehand. Um, and we will mention to everyone who is interested in keeping it or hasn't seen it yet, we'll say when we're going to get into the deep spoiler stuff. Um, so yeah, Denise, how's your week been? Yeah, it's good. good? I just uh, did a couple of streams, uh, I think over Easter, just finished a stream earlier as well. So for those that don't know, shameless plug right here, uh, <laughs> Twitch TV slash Denverly. I'm a streamer, a casual streamer, you know, I just play for fun. Uh, a little bit of Fortnite, a little bit of Overwatch, uh, and any any game really, that's a, that's a good time. So What do you play today? Uh, Today I played Fortnite first, but I was kind of trash. Uh, so I just moved on to Overwatch and had a few good games. Uh, my stream kind of crashed a little bit. Couldn't fix it in the end, but you know what? It's all good. So Hey, you still got in there. Did you yeah. uh, You want to introduce and talk about the what's happening in Fortnite? Yeah, actually. Um, I didn't play it on stream today, but I, I played it last stream. So right now uh, there's a limited time mode on Fortnite called um, Avengers Endgame. I mean, obviously. So basically... Um, when Infinity War came out, there was uh, a limited time mode for Fortnite players to either play as Thanos or play as someone against Thanos um, to, you know, stop, stop him. And um, essentially what you need to do is either survive as Thanos or survive as the humans. They brought this back, but they kind of did this in a way where all the heroes are involved, all the kind of, um, you know, all these guys, basically, all their superpowers are incorporated into the game. So if you're Captain America, you can loot a shield. Uh, if you're Hawkeye, you can, um, you know, have that bow and arrow. And you get, that, you get that all at the beginning? Like, you get to pick who you want to be? And then no, you don't. It's randomly chosen. Oh, you're either nice. on Thanos' side as okay. one of his minions, yeah. or you're a hero, and you have to go loot. Um, because it is a battle royale. You have yep. to go loot and find your weapons um, Oh, so if you're Captain America and you find... You wouldn't know if you're Captain America because you would just be the skin that you're wearing and oh, right, you know, okay. you'll know you're on the hero side and you'll be given a map and that map will lead you to one of the, um, the golden oh, kind right. of, um, I guess, weapons that, that either of the characters use. So. Cool. And you yeah. played it? It was good? Yeah, I mean, it was okay for me. I thought it was a little bit hectic because there's too many sounds. There's too many kind of... Um, like stimulus around. So when you're wearing headphones and you're yeah. playing and it's a battle royale game, right? So you have to listen to other players. There's just too many like, you know, explosion sounds and then there's like these laser beams from like Thanos' minions and then there's, you know, Thor's ground pound. I mean, it's really cool, but then, <laughs> I mean, there's just too much going on. So, but I mean, it's gotten a lot of um, really good... Um, Sorry about that. It's gotten. Right. <laughs> it's Might gotten have been to my son. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like ah, let's not. Okay, that is annoying. <laughs> anyway, sorry guys. Um, no, there's just, there's been a lot of news around it. A bit a bit more positive than negative, just because it's just really cool for you know a company like Fortnite or Epic Games to collaborate with Marvel and mm. to collaborate with you know I think things that are very mainstream and that's why they're successful. Yeah, and I think as you know, as gamers and as gaming fans or pe people who work, you know, for talent gaming, then I think we're interested in seeing more of that integration between the mainstream movie series and obviously games that we play on a regular basis. Yeah. Like we haven't really had that in the past, where you've had a very good comic book movie mm -hmm. that has portrayed either the comic books or has portrayed sorry, not comic book movie, gaming gaming movie. Yeah. If you look back in the history, you've got Super Mario Bros. and those kind of like big letdowns that we've had. Um, hopefully, this year we'll get something great with Detective Pikachu. Yeah. Fingers crossed for that. It's coming out in Hong Kong two weeks time. But yeah, so I'm glad to see that that you know you've you've played it and we went to see the movie together. So you know that you've you know it yeah. lives up to the dream, so to speak, with that. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that kind of leads us into a section that uh, we like to call well, I kind of cheekily named pre-roll, where we talk about some new 
gaming news and topics that are coming up before we get into the hot topic of the week. Today's hot topic is obviously Endgame. We will talk about spoilers later on and we'll get into what our thoughts were. I've got some interesting theories. I'm sure you've got some cool stuff to bring to the table. Um, but a few things just to mention today. Do you know it's, it's Gal Gadot's birthday? So we want to say happy birthday to Gal Gadot. Oh, uh, okay, I would say that out of respect, I won't say her age. I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do but I. Either way, Wonder Woman, happy birthday to you. Um, on a sadder side of note things, which kind of brings into a game that I'm interested in personally to talk about, is um, it's now oh, is it 25 years since Ayrton Senna unfortunately lost his life um, in Formula One. Um, but that said, on the bright side of that, F1 2019 will be coming out sooner than it will or was last year. And there's a couple of cool things confirmed there. I don't know if you're a, f- a racing gamer. Not a huge racing gamer, but, you know, I always kind of take a peek sometimes, so. Okay, well, take yeah. a peek because this year they've got F2 confirmed, so you've got more series to get involved in. Nice. Senate and Prost are going to come back, which for F1 fans is a huge deal to have them in the game. And there's going to be a whole challenge mode based around them, which is be kind of cool to check out. I'll hopefully check some of that stuff out when I eventually get into Twitch. I mean, I heard you had some big news around Twitch this week. It's kind of made me a little bit jealous. Yes. Um, well, actually, today, a couple hours ago, I made a Twitch affiliate. So, I feel like that deserves a round of applause. You, thank you, thank I mean, I'm not familiar um, with everything around that, but I, <laughs> that sounds like a big deal. Do you get like a blue tick on your Twitch feed or what? Not yet. No. So that's okay. uh, for partnered streamers. So right now, what happened was there was a there's pretty much a checklist on you know how many followers I got, um, you know how many hours I've streamed, and the average number of viewers. So okay. they see that my viewership is growing and it's kind of consistent. At this point, and um, I mean, that, that pretty much just means, you know, I can get paid now by Twitch, <laughs> essentially. Bringing in the money. Um, but it's great. <laughs> I mean, because this way, you know, you know I can, I, like, I'll, I'll be able to interact with more fans. People can subscribe to me. You know, they can get exclusive content. Um, I guess, you know, another shameless plug, I guess. But uh, you can subscribe to me now. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Can we get a link? We can't get a link sent out to that. I don't uh, know. We'll, we'll figure out. We'll figure it we'll out. Get later. It, up. it will yeah. be appearing somewhere, maybe. I don't know. Right woo, woo! Magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so congrats on that. Thank Obviously, you. I'll, Thank I'll you. hopefully get into the Twitching game at some point. Maybe potentially should, when yeah. F1 2019 comes out, I'll start with that. Just we some should do a squad career stream. They, uh, they announced, yes. yeah, actually, one more thing. They announced, I think, was it two weeks ago? Uh, squad streaming. So you can, with three other people, all live broadcast your stream and have a link to their stream as well. Nice, okay. Um, so, you know, you can have, like, for example, four-person squad on Fortnite, and you're all streaming, but then everyone can see everyone's screen. It's oh, great. It's really cool. Yeah, it's just like Mario Kart, you know, with the whole with the whole split screen thing. That's what we have to do with. Yes. Those we'll are my kind of Mario games. Kart. <laughs> I'm all into the old school games. Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers. Ooh, oh, I haven't judged you on it. We need to get that out. Um, yeah. yeah, okay, so then let's get on to that. We had some Twitch. We had some cool games. Um and other things I want to mention just in the pre-roll game for you guys out there. I don't know if anyone's seen it today, but the mm, questionable Sonic trailer launched this morning, Hong Kong time, I think, oh. in the evening yesterday. Very interesting trailer with Jim Carrey in the, in the leading, well, not leading role. He will be hopefully be turning into Eggman. Although from the trailer, he doesn't look anything like him yet. I'm assuming what they're going to do is basically have it as an origin story for him turning into Eggman. Yeah, I think um, so. Which is a redeeming feature for it, because if you've seen what the Sonic trailer looks like, then it's questionable. Let us know what you think in the chat about <laughs> how this anthrop- anthropomorphic um, looking Sonic character looks. What, are your, what were your thoughts? I just showed you the trailer beforehand. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be honest, it just he looks a little bit too realistic. He's supposed to be a cartoon character, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean this whole Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, I played Sonic the Hedgehog as a child. You know, I freaking loved it. I played it mm-hmm. when it was 3D, though, not 2D. I, I'm not, I'm yeah, not I right. got into it on the Dreamcast. So On the Dreamcast? Yeah, I got All into right. it really late because we didn't have a Sega. I had a Sony in growing right. up. But I played it on the GameCube, right? Oh, so it yeah, was yeah. Sonic versus Shadow. Okay. And, you know, the renderings there were, you know, starting to be 3D, a little bit more textured, and, mm. you know, because the, the world was actually in 3D, so you would actually be in, in his perspective, but third person. Okay. Um, you know, he just looked a lot more cool and slick and, you know, with his hair back and, like, you know, with the whole flowing yeah. kind of... More cartoony, um, more... More cartoony, Exaggerated, more, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. and more adventurous, right? And then in this trailer, he just looked like... That's like know, a teenage a boy. Fluff. Yeah, a ball of fluff. Yeah, it's <laughs> like literally <laughs> like a ball of fluff. Like you can see every hair. It's like, it's really not realistic because even yeah. if you look at the dog in real life, like, no, you I know. They, they've, they've done a weird match where they're trying to get something in between both what a human, maybe, Sonic would look like and then what yeah. the cartoon character would look He's like. He's a hedgehog. Like, they don't yeah. even have hair. I mean, well, they have, like, little well, they prickles. Have they have spikes. Yeah, <laughs> which he kind of picks up in the trailer and looks at, but it just looks like a hair, right? It doesn't, yeah. It doesn't sit well. I hope, kind of like Dark Phoenix, which obviously uh, I had another trailer this week, um, which 
for me now with Dark Phoenix, it's a similar thing to Sonic. I'm hoping that as it goes, I'll take feedback on board. Yeah. They could potentially, because he's a CG character, completely change the design mm. um, and still kind of weave it in. So I'm hoping if there's enough fan kind of backlash, they might just go, great, or it was a ruse. Here's the original <laughs> Sonic. Um, because in a similar way, Dark Phoenix's third trailer, I think, came out last week. And for me, I hadn't been interested in this at all until the third trailer came out. Okay. Because it just looked exactly like the previous movie in the in the original trilogy of the X Men, right? Where at the end it was just you know Dark Phoenix was just went kind of berserk and everyone had to uh, combat that in some way and it looked exactly like that with certain people, some of the people dying. Um, they're giving away too much in the trailer. Like it looks like um, the blue lady. I can't remember her name now. Why have I gone blank on her name? Oh my gosh! The shape shifting character is yeah. basically going to die. I think in that, and they've given that away in the trailer, and that kind of annoyed me a bit. But then this new trailer came out. They've got a lot of space stuff, which they haven't been showing till now, which is kind of cool. It's where Dark Phoenix went in the comics. It's nice to see them going off world, which I really think they should do with X Men because there's a huge universe they could yeah. go into, yeah. especially with Doctor Doom and everything. If they bring those guys into it, and um, with the Fantastic Four, um, but it looks interesting now. I would, I want to go and see it, and I, I've. Maybe it's kind of, you know, I have no expectations going into it now of being like, look, if it's good, it's good. And I know, I, and I'm sure you as another comic book fan would go and see it just for, for pure fact that it's out. Yeah. I'm not going to not go and see this movie. I mean, I think um, even after the release of, you know, Deadpool 1 and 2, right? Because Deadpool is still a part of the, the whole X-Men kind of. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's kind of a weird character. He's an oddball, right? I mean, but I mean, that's what, that's what makes him interesting. He's not directly related, but then they try to relate him. And I feel like now they're just trying to tie everything up into like one nice little package for this generation. And then the next generation, there'll be someone else, a new actor. Yes. You know, new kind of storyline, but using the, the references from the comic books before, you know? No, I think that that's absolutely right, especially with the Fox and Disney merger now happening and yeah. everyone being now brought in. Mm -hmm. They're going to just rehash this. I think Disney has basically yeah. just looked at this and gone, look, it's made. We'll get it out there. <laughs> that's it. Like, if yeah. it makes money, it makes money. It's not going to make money, I don't honestly think, with the, how much they spent on it. Um, People will still watch it, though. So Yeah, well, like I can say, I'm, I'm still going to go watch it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's interesting. So I think that is everything for me for pre-roll before we get into our hot topic. Yeah. Anything else you want to you want to talk about today? Uh, no, I don't think I think that's everything uh, that is not spoilers. Oh, right. Yes, the, yes, everything not spoilers. <laughs> the only thing I had here, which is quite funny, letting you behind the scenes, I had a little link between this and our hot topic. But in Hong Kong, I don't I don't know about anywhere else in the world. I'm sure they had some other people who were going a little bit crazy. Speaking of spoilers, someone in Hong Kong came straight out of a cinema and spoiled it in front of everyone else that was queuing up. Did you see this news article? No. Oh, and, and he got beat up. Yeah, he got beat up. That was the, that was the <laughs> article. It wasn't all oh, the spoilers. It was like, yeah, man, get, man gets beaten up by sport because they spoiled a movie. And I was like, yeah, like I'm not a violent person, but I feel like I can relate to whoever did that yeah. to come out and just be like, why would you? Why would you do that? I don't know. But so with that kind of said. We will talk a little bit now about our initial thoughts of the movie. If spoilers come up. That's likely. So if you haven't seen this movie, this is your warning now. Spoilers could hit at any point in time. Yeah. Um, if you, you know, so it's up to you guys if you want to stick around. If you do, and we do have some comments in the chat we can track, then let us know any questions you have and we'll try and answer those too. Um, so yeah, let's just, let's just kick off into Endgame. We loved the movie. We saw it together. Yes. We had to get in for the first showing in Hong Kong. It yes, was eight. Did. The tickets for eight thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. Great time because we're all pre pre work. It was great. <laughs> yeah, no, had a had a coffee. It was ready. You know, good night's sleep. All uh, good. It, it was great, and I think w w I'll allude to this now. But it was great to see that you were dressed in pure black, which I think was was fitting. It for was. It that was. I in mean, the movie. <laughs> it was it was business casual, you know. Uh, but black, I felt was the was the right color. I knew yeah. I knew something was going to happen. I mean, it is called Endgame for a reason. Um, it did that. I mean, the title itself did allude to kind of what was going to happen, right? Everyone yep. knew it was going to be a revenge story. Mm -hmm. um, and Endgame just really sounds like it's the end of a certain type of era. You yeah, know? and I think we knew it being 11, 11 years of movies now. If yes. you I obviously Iron Man it started with, then yes. you knew that this had to be a Randolph point again. Mm -hmm. It and had to be. And it's good that they've done it that way. So let's start with what were your initial thoughts from watching the movie? Um. Overall, very entertaining. Three hours it did not feel like three no. hours. Not it at really all. Didn't. Yeah. And I, I, just to know, I've seen it three times now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only yes. seen it once. So. I'm that kind of person. I've seen it three times, but then I had different <laughs> friends and, and you know family members to go and see that with. Mm -hmm. But even the third time I've seen it, I not only did I see a lot more, mm -hmm. which I think you know it's almost worth seeing a second time just for that yeah. pure fact. Like I was hearing script lines, I thought this is a different cut because like. I was so engrossed in watching it, so nervous about missing something the first time that I didn't hear certain lines and it played out well. And, and um, yeah. 
Yeah, so I thought it didn't, it didn't, even the third time, it didn't feel long. Yeah. It didn't feel too long. That's good. I mean, because there's a lot of things that you would miss because initially you're, you're seeing, you know, the, the, the acting, you want to understand the story. You're, you already have questions from watching mm. Infinity War, right? And yeah. those, are the, are, those are the things you're looking for, the, the answers to those questions that you already have. Um, but I guess in general, yeah, very entertaining. Um, you know, a couple of things here and there, but, you know, we can get an- into that a little bit yeah, later. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. All right, so let's start with, what do you have one like and one hate about this? One ultimate like and one thing if you had to? Like, I think we agree that the movie is good. Yeah. But is there anything you particularly hate about it? So for okay. you, what are those? I actually really hated Thor's character. I think that was one of the worst things okay. about, I mean, his character development from, you know, even the first Thor movie yep. until Endgame. And they just made him seem like seem like a buffoon, you know. Even though he's you know the mighty god of thunder, right? Yeah. But I think the way the way they tried to make him very comedic in the end was really irritating, mm-hmm. you know. And then they kind of try to force a lot of humor into you know what he's become. I mean, yes. a lot of people can relate to what he became in the movie, and you know. But I felt like there was just no point of return for him. Because of what happened in that in, in the movie and, you know, whatever happened to his family and everything else, you know, backstories. But I don't know. It, it just wasn't satisfying as a character develops. And then even in the end when, you know, he goes off into... into as I Guardian guess, this week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he goes off into the, in, into the galaxy, yeah. essentially. I just felt like it wasn't complete, you know? No, I agree. I completely agree with that. I think that... I, I liked what they did with it and I can relate to. Yeah. And I think what it, what they set up for him in Ragnarok was like the best place it could be for him. Tete Waititi. Always got that name wrong, so apologies for butchering <laughs> that. Um, Taika Waititi. Yeah, whatever. The, yeah, yeah the guy that it. did the movie. Yeah. <laughs> he did some really great work for that and he was in line to do Guardians 3 until James Gunn got re-signed, which I was right. still excited about because when I heard that Gunn was gone, I was like, okay, I'm off this because he made those movies for me. Like, they're some of my favorite movies. Yeah. Now he's back on anyway. So I know that he did some great work in Ragnarok for that. Okay. To see Thor, I understood why, and it made sense why he was, you know, he's run down, he's huge, and he's just let himself really go. Yeah. I can totally agree that it's something I don't necessarily like about it was how they finished it. Like, they didn't give him that rounding off. I honestly thought at the end when he was coming out ready for the final battle, he might just do, like, one power flex, get hit yeah. by lightning, and suddenly be like, boom, ripped again. Because yeah. he kind of did, right? And his hair changed. Like, he went from having scraggly hair to being, like, actually having it plaited, yeah. looking better. But then he's still huge yeah. and let go. And you could tell that in the fight that he was kind of held back by that a little bit. Yeah. There is something, I mean, this kind of goes down the whole political spectrum, but I feel like when, after watching it three times, there is a lot of pandering to certain demographics and audiences there and mm-hmm. to zeitgeist of where we are now in the media. Yeah. And I think one of those is like, we have to make that character look a bit stupid or make him like that to let other people shine. Yeah. Um, so it felt like it was a bit of that and it felt like it went on t- for too long. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like what they did to begin with and I was just hoping exactly like you were that they would round that out. Yeah. I, I, I like the idea, spoilers, that I like the idea that he's going to probably be in Guardians 3. Oh, yeah. Now? Or as Guardians of the Galaxy as they could as go Guardians with. Guardians of the Galaxy, <laughs> love it. Uh, and again, I love that James Gunn's back with that and I can't wait to see what they do with it. They yeah. relate that last scene, or one of the last scenes between the two Chris's, yeah. Chris Hemsworth and Chris Pratt in the ship when they're about to fly off with the Guardians. Thor and... Um, it was just beautiful. That back and forth, that banter. Oh, yeah. That last question when he's great. like, you know, I, I'm, in, I'm in charge. I'm in charge. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like looking at him like, no. You know you're not. <laughs> like, that's going to no, be that, good. That was hilarious. I mean, I, I totally relate to that as well. I feel like Chris Pratt is kind of like my spirit animal. <laughs> you know, I think just as Star-Lord, right? Yeah. He's kind of awkward. He's kind of, you know, he, he does have the moves, you know? It's like it's like a weird kind of dad charm. Yeah. No, it is. And they <laughs> really they revisited is. that because when they went to Morag yeah. in the whole time travel part, we'll, we'll get into this later on, I'm kind of skipping ahead. When he was singing and dancing, it had that same kind of fun to it yeah. and getting hit in the face and everything. It was just, he, he played his character well in it. Yes. Um, okay, so that was your one hate. What was your, what was your one love? I mean, there's loads of things you probably love. Uh, I mean, there's so many. I don't know what to choose from, but I think it's the, the way the movie played with my emotions. Mm. I, I think you knew I was quite emotional. Someone was cutting onions in the theater, <laughs> you know, very close to my there face. There were a lot of onions in that theater. A lot yeah. of onions. Um, but I feel like there was just such a good mixture of humor, love, you know, sadness, sacrifice. It's, it, it really tells a story of, you know, someone's life. And yeah. like, 
everyone can relate to every moment of it and that's kind of where they really brought it together and like it's just that's why it was so entertaining for three hours straight you didn't no, even know it was right. three hours I didn't even know I had to pee until I left, you know? <laughs> I, yeah, and I was surprised I didn't have to go yeah. either of the times that I've been to this movie, but you're right in saying that I think um, any movie that can make me laugh out loud mm -hmm. multiple times, oh yeah, but at the same time then make me pretty much cry <laughs> in moments. I mean, pretty I'm a much. father, so I've got... Well, I mean, it, it helped. There's one line in that movie between Stark and oh. his daughter that just... Yeah. Every time I see that movie, it's going to get me. It's like, what, it reminds me of watching Watership Down when I was a kid. Every yeah. time you hear the, the music for Bright Eyes come on, oh. it's going to be the same as hearing that. I love you. I love you 3000. Oh, so I like, know. Oh, the feels. God, God, God. Actual uh, feels. Like, yeah. You can feel it in your throat. So you're like, I'm yeah. okay. Oh, I was holding myself back. I was like, <laughs> oh, da, 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 da. it's a good thing uh, that like, like, there's a lot of time at the end during the credits just to be like, compose yourself and be like, no, no, like, I, no, okay. no crying. No crying for me. No, no, I'm just having some popcorn. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, oh, something's stuck in my throat. Yeah. But it was good. I, I totally agree with those two. I think for me, the like would be, um, it didn't waste any time explaining anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was great, including time travel, which we'll get onto later as a longer topic. But mm. yeah, for me, I didn't, I liked the fact that it wasn't just like, hey, let's explain exactly how time travel works. <laughs> for this. Or let's explain who Thor is and, yeah. and that kind of thing. But at the same time, I think it was easy enough for someone who hadn't seen anything apart from Endgame. And I recommend the only movie you have to see before this is Endgame. You can find YouTube trailers that explain everything else. If Infinity, you don't want, you mean Infinity. I mean Infinity War. Sorry, yes, <laughs> you're right. Infinity War, yes. <laughs> yeah, the only one you have to see is Infinity War before this. Yeah. Um, so I like that part of it. I think for me, the hate would be that having seen it three times now, I initially saw some plot holes. Obviously, with the time travel stuff, especially there's going to be, it's not going to be perfect at all, and I'm not expecting that at all. I'm not going to hold it to the movie and be like, you yeah. didn't do that for me, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone's going to be perfect in that. Time travel um, was hard. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a t-shirt right travel, there. Time hard. travel was hard, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's hard to master, right? But anyway, we can get hard to master, but easy to like pick up, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I just need a time crystal, or you know. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Just think, like time travel is in the mind. I'm doing it right now. I'm thinking about my no. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so yeah, the thing I hated though, uh, other than that, was um, plot holes yeah. and no post credit scene. Although that's debatable. It is very really debatable, debatable, yes. Um, I did hear something. Um, I, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure it's spoiler. Sorry, guys. Um, over the crying at the end. Over the, like, yeah, the wailing. <laughs> over the wailing. Over the onions being cut. Yeah, um, it's just constant chopping. Yeah, no, just there just was this sound, you know. Maybe that was the, the sound of someone cutting onions. It was like. <laughs> right? Like, I mean, oh. it did kind of sound like that, but. Yeah, I mean, what do you think it was? It sounds like metal being like. Like forged. Forged, yeah. yeah. Like kind of like a, a blacksmith or something. Yeah, and that's why I was thinking it's either a throwback to the original Iron Man and him making the suit in the cave, mm -hmm. or they're alluding to something in the future. Now, that'd be really, really hard to figure out what that is unless it's someone reforging an Infinity Gauntlet, which would be too easy for me. I don't think they'll go that route with what's yeah. happening next. They've already told the story of the Infinity Gauntlet, you yeah. know, the, the stones as well. I mean, they, they built up to that for so many years, right? Mm. But I have a feeling it could also be about Captain America's shield. Yes. It could be that. Could. I mean, there's so, there's so, what, and, you know, I guess, you know, the whole Wakanda, uh, what is it, Black Panther? Yep. They use the metal. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember what it's Vibranium? called. Vibranium? Vibranium, yeah. They can't I mean, call it, it um, the Wolverine material because of licensing up until now. Now they can. Oh. But they, that's why they called it Vibranium, I think. It's because they couldn't, it's supposed to be the same material that covers um, Wolverine. Oh, interesting. Uh, adamantium. I, I think, okay. Chat's gonna kill me if Ooh. I get that wrong. I know. <laughs> I'm not. I, I should have said this at the beginning. Preface this, but I, I am not yeah. a all source of all knowledge on comic books, so I probably got that I'm wrong. I'm not a vocabulary person either. You know, I'll be like, yeah, the thing <laughs> with the little circle and the little. Star. Yeah, I mean, we've already got people's <laughs> names wrong and couldn't remember them, so we're, we're great to chat, go. Chat can uh, correct us. Yes, later. exactly. <laughs> we rely we rely on heavily on chat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that's true. It could be that. It could be someone smashing something. It could just be. It could be anything, really. Yeah. That's the thing. It's it, it, They're just playing with our imaginations yeah. at this point, right? So play with my emotions now. They're playing with our imaginations. <laughs> I know. They just want to play with us. <laughs> well, <laughs> now we can play with them in Fortnite, so that's great. Woo! <laughs> okay, so, yeah, there's our likes and dislikes. Let's now move on to heavy spoiler territory. So, again, a warning if you don't want any spoilers for this movie and you've still stuck around this long. Why are you still here? Mm -hmm. I don't know why you're still here. <laughs> you must hate yourself. Um, uh, okay, so um, let, we can go back and forth. If you've got some points to talk about. For me, obviously, we, we said that one of the things that I liked was that they didn't explain things too well, mm -hmm. but this is a new type of time travel, which I've not seen before yeah. or heard of. 
I don't see, you know when, um, what's her name? The Chosen One. Yeah. She was explaining to the Hulk, um, you know, the different timelines, mm. um, you know, what happened, what will happen at this timeline versus if you take the stone from this timeline and whatever. And then he's like, oh no, um, what's his name? Benedict Cumberbatch, Doctor yes. Strange. Brando no, not Doctor Strange. Brando Dean Cumbo Snatch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like whatever you want it to be. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. And he was like, oh, uh, when she realized, she was like, oh, okay, since he made the decision, fine, then it becomes one timeline. Mm. And I thought that was quite strange because you know how you have to put the stones back in each place? It, it, it just didn't make sense to me because you already created a new timeline, yes. right? There's Because okay, there's so many different variants of time travel. You know, you know what the grandfather paradox is, yep. right? When when you as a you know as a grandfather, two things would happen. Number one, you would just die because you would never be born. That's why they were like, why can't we just kill baby Thanos? Yeah, right. That was one of the things. The other one was, um, you know, you create a new timeline, and that means there's parallel universes, right? And yes. There, and there's parallel, you know, parallel timelines. Things Which I'm I, I'm more on board with that. Is happening. I think that's the only way they can make new movies. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to be honest, but, I mean, <laughs> realistically, okay, okay. There's no realistically in time travel, but um, it just depends on which one you fancy, right? Mm. Which one you think makes the most sense to you? Whatever is more logical. Well, that's that why sense. I think it worked because they didn't explain it too heavily. They didn't bother trying to name any science or trying to do anything like that. They didn't Rube Goldberg this. In a sense, they also you know bring up that. Scene. It's quite mm -hmm. a good scene to bring up with yeah. the Hulk and the Eternal One. Eternal yeah. One? Yeah. It's, it's no, the, the great chosen one. one. The Chosen One. Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It is the Chosen One. Um, vocabulary, guys. Where, <laughs> where the way she explains time travel is actually completely contradictory to the way that Professor Hulk had explained it previously. Yeah. Because he basically said, look, you can't, like, your, basically, your past or your present becomes your past, right? So you can't go back to where your present was originally. Because if you go back in time, mm -hmm your past becomes your future because you've gone back there, right? But it's obviously future for you because it's in, in a linear time scale. When you've gone back in time, it's, it's what you're doing in front of you, right? So you're basically, to go back in time, your past becomes your future mm -hmm. and your future in that sense is then your past. But to that <laughs> sense, you've got one continuous timeline. You, go, you might go back, but it's not curving backwards. It's just that that's what you're going to do anyway. It's continuing. So it's a continuous timeline. I know that probably doesn't it's make much sense. It's just one string. It's one strand. Yeah. But then what they were saying with Professor Hulk and the Time Stone was like, oh, we'll come back and put it back so that like it never happened. But that's, that's the opposite. That's what they were saying time travel wasn't. They, was, they were saying you can't just go back yeah. and erase what happened because that still happened. Like it will just have a different strand. So again, that kind of comes down to, I think it's the old adage of, there's two ways you can go about it. Either you can try really hard to explain it and just stick to that, yeah. which will always have holes in, as you said, or yeah. you can maybe try, like they did with the Joker's backstory in, in The Dark Knight where he said three different backstories and it was ambiguous, oh, yeah. but no one questioned it. They were like, oh, it's the Joker. Same thing here. It's like, well, they've said it's confusing. So that's enough for me to go, okay, I don't need to understand time yeah. travel, whether they say it's right or wrong or anything. Well, I think, I mean, if you, okay, if you look at the, the end, the end where uh, Captain America, you know, spoiler alert, you know, becomes really old, right? Yes. I mean, he's a... Uh, yeah, exactly. See, he's gone back to try to fix what... The Hulk promised the Chosen One, where he's he's put back the stones, but he stayed there, right? Yeah. So he's aged within that time, which makes sense. But you know, in the timeline that was the present, I guess, or like post the uh, Endgame mm -hmm. War, the battle, yeah, the yeah. battle, yeah. Um, you know, it's like he's lived. That it doesn't make sense to me because it's like you've lived more than you could, but you came back to the present where. You know, you've aged so much. It, 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 I feel like it's very confusing for a lot of people. It's like, yeah, sure, you lived in that time, but then wasn't Peggy married? And you know, at yes, that time, yes, in Carter, she she had kids with a different man, apparently. Yeah, I so mean, she had a whole life without him. Yeah. So what happened to that timeline? You know, what happened to that whole? Because he ignored her when when he when he emerged right from mm -hmm. the ice. She was already old or yep. dying, right? She was I dying. I think he went to her funeral and he's seen. That's what that yeah. from the trailer. He's carrying a coffin. That's her coffin. Exactly. Yeah. So. I mean, I feel like just that whole that whole Captain America thing needs a little bit more explaining. Yeah. I feel like they could explain it easily because you do see at each point when they are back in the 50s. Was it the 50s? Or whatever timeline that was in the... Yes, the, when they're the, back at the army base. In the army base, yeah. yeah. They could probably explain it, but 
they've kind of left it up to people to try to decode themselves. And that's where that whole time travel, yeah. you know, that, you're filling that in the paradox. gaps yourself as well. Exactly. And it's helping you feel like you're part of the story. I think that's great mm. from a psychological perspective for many storytellers yeah. to go, look, I'm just going to leave bits around and you can figure it out in yourself yeah. and you feel more connected to the movie. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think at some point what they're going to do is go back and take him out of time. <laughs> so to speak, which they kind of, I think they did in the comic books too, where they had like old man Captain America. So they kind of went back and got him because they needed him again. Because, like, not to skip ahead again, but that whole Captain America thing, whether he gives the shield to Falcon. Mm -hmm. Falcon doesn't have any superpowers. He is just a dude with wings. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, Captain America was, like, almost pretty much invulnerable to, like, being beaten up, and that's why he could keep going. He had super serum. He now has to wield a shield. He's not going to be able to take a punch from, say, Thanos while holding that shield just because he has a shield. Yeah. So... uh, questionable parts but then of what, what they'll about do there. Black Widow and, and Hawkeye, you know? I yeah. Mean, they're both not, not invincible either. No, they're not. And I think they dealt with them really well in that movie with them not being invincible. Because yeah. there was that funny meme that went around where you saw <laughs> from the trailer where Black Widow shooting a, a target. Yeah. And everyone's just laughing, like, <laughs> pretending, like, what are you going to do? Like, <laughs> shoot, shoot, who are you going to shoot yeah. with that pistol? Like, what are you really doing? Which is why, you know, what they did with her in the movie is, is great. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And that kind of, talking about women, I, sh- I should preface actually this. Obviously, this movie takes place directly, well, initially it's directly after Infinity War. Mm-hmm. And I missed, in, in the first viewing with you, I missed that first scene yes. with um, Hawkeye. Did you, were well, you there for that? I was not, no. So you missed, I missed it too. It as well. So you don't know about this? No, I don't. Okay, like so it. the first scene is actually Hawkeye's family and him losing his family. So he's having a picnic, right. he's teaching his daughter to, to shoot, yeah. and he turns around and they're gone. And so it's li- it, that's the snap, obviously. And that's what yeah. drives him to become Ronan, to then go killing people who don't deserve Vigilante, to be alive. Yeah. yeah, and that made so much more sense when I saw that <laughs> second. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I knew about Ronan anyway and on what that, he was doing. I you know, Thanos was the one who snapped yeah. his family away. I, I kind of just guessed that from, you know, even from missing that scene, which was, you know, which was Yeah, you don't, need, you don't need the I scene. Need it, just, it just added some extra context. Yeah. But anyway, so it takes on, you know, exactly afterwards. And then we have, you know, they go into a battle. They basically just instantly insta-kill Thanos because he has no stones. Mm. And then this five years later, and you know, as a result of that, they can't do anything to help it. Thanos has destroyed all the stones. Yeah, there's nothing they can do, so they just sit around until Ant Man basically Avengers, the hero of Avengers, who a friend of mine actually pointed out recently, who he thought the hero of Avengers was, and I tend to agree. Quick question to you: Who do you think the hero, the ultimate hero of Avengers in, of Endgame was? Mm, it's definitely Ant Man. Yeah. I mean, how else would they have gone back, right? No, actually. That's what Ooh, I'm trying to allude to. Like, okay, I like this. I like this. <laughs> I mean, but was it Doctor? S- was it Doctor Strange? I mean, I didn't think about that, but 14, it could be the 14 million instances. There's like right? creepy one finger that you did at the end. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for me, it's that's definitely a good point. It could be Doctor Strange, but then is it the rat? The rat? You know, the, that's how Ant Man gets out. The rat or the mouse just walks across oh, his controls. Ooh. Because there's memes going on about that too, where it's just like the real hero or the unsung hero of, of Endgame is just is the a rat man. that didn't get snapped. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, he was in that time and place. You know, he got him out of the quantum realm. Ooh, Pretty damn tough. powerful. OP. Is. Rat is OP. Rat you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> He's the new meta, guys. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so the movie then plays out. They they go through time. It's a time heist, which I love that they called it that. Perfect Ant-Man yeah, line. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. Very nice. It's a time heist. They go back in time to different moments where they could then pick the gems out of history, bring them back mm-hmm. to the present. I don't want to say back to the future. Oh. Bring them back to the present <laughs> and then basically use them to try and defeat or undo the snap. Yeah. Um, and that final battle for me was just amazing. Like I was literally shaking. Yeah, no, that. I had butterflies. I don't even yeah. like, I felt like. I felt that. I was oh. just like, oh, what is it? Like, this is it's incredible. Like, it was like my high school sweetheart. You know, I was like, yeah. oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being like, you know. No, do, do, do go on, do go on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it was when Doctor Strange's like sorcerers came in, you know, yeah, with the, with the, with all with of the them. oh, see, vocabulary guys, chat, please help me out. You know, with the little circle thing and then they all come in through their little like. The portals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought that and like looking at the different scenes as well from where they came from because mm-hmm. they just suddenly all just snap back, right? Because they, well, they came back. Yeah, there's that gap between when Professor Hulk does the snap. Yeah. Until when it's, um, Falcon is heard on Captain Zia going on your left, which yeah. is a really nice callback to Captain America, First, the yeah. Winter Soldier, because mm-hmm. he's running around that whole field and he keeps going on your left, on your left, on your left. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, I think at that point, Doctor Strange has come back and then gone, I know what you need to do and gone around and collected yeah. everyone. Because if you look closely, there's you've got everyone from Wakanda, mm-hmm. 
You've got loads of people from Guardians. So you've yes. got the Ravagers. All the Ravagers. All the Ravagers yeah. are there. You've got um, all of the Doctor Strange mm-hmm. um, you've got sorcerers. You've got Wakanda and everyone. Yep. So that obviously he's taken time to just go and get everyone and then yeah. come back. At the perfect moment. That was a beautiful moment. It was a great moment. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about... Um, I've got some other points to mention here. What do you think about Thor... Uh, not Thor, sorry. The Captain America tease. Uh, the Captain America reveal. Spoilers. Big spoilers here. With him picking up Thor's... <sighs> Yeah, okay, no. So I guess time travel wise, right? Yeah. He got his hammer back, guys. Yeah, I he mean, did. He did. He got his hammer Which back. Which goes to the questions then, in that timeline, does Thor just lose his hammer? No, because it was destroyed by Thanos. Yeah, but that, no, destroyed by Hela, his, his oh, sister. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Yes. But Hela. then that doesn't happen for ages. Like, he ha- that's only in Thor 2. They, go, they travel back in time to Thor 2. That's, that's a halfway through Thor 2. So are they saying in that timeline that Thor just doesn't have a hammer from that moment onwards? In yep. that that parallel universe, which is what it would then become, right? Yeah, I mean, because they can't, I mean, they could they could bring the hammer back, but then, yeah, in that timeline, it would have been gone. Yeah, well, that was my other question. Like, when Captain America went back in time to put the stones back, yeah. and he takes the hammer, does he go back to, and give the stone, uh, give the hammer back at the same time he gives this, maybe? I mean, that's an explanation for it. I mean, do you have to put everything that you took from the past back? That's a good question. Oh, and you know what? There was also one more thing about the time thing. Um, when they went back to... Right after the the incident, right? Mm. The first incident, the first mm. Avengers, guys. Yes. Um, and Loki cool. disappears. Yeah, exactly. So then is Loki still alive? So is he, yeah, is he still alive? Yeah. Is that another timeline? What happened? He basically just took that, that, that stone. Yeah, disappeared. And just disappeared. So there's another story well, to tell there. Yeah, right? and that's the thing. It's, it's, I don't know what it's called scientifically. I'm sure, again, chat, please help us on this. Um, there's a theory out there where, again, like you could go back and kill Thanos as a baby. But mm-hmm. it's almost like then you have the world without that, which could be worse. And somehow everything happens the same way, but it's just through a different means. Mm-hmm. Like you can't change fate almost in a sense, not to get but That's also a paradox, right? Yeah. It but is. it's like if you go back and go, okay, well, I'm going to sh- say you get shot and you go back in the past and go, I'm going to stop the man who's going to shoot me or stop someone who's going to shoot a president. Yeah. By stopping that person, you make something else happen as a result. Butterfly effect. Yeah, butterfly effect, right? Yeah. So that could be explanation for it. It's like, yes, you could go back and Loki got away, but then he dies in some other means. Perhaps. Maybe. Yeah, but That's the thing. It's either you believe that you are the, you know, you can control your fate or your fate controls you, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a matter of perspective, I think. Yeah, um, no, I agree. It's what you think will make you feel happier, you know? <laughs> I mean. Yes, which is why it works quite well because yeah. you don't think about it and you think okay well i'm okay with my explanation of it as, as they've said exactly so that works for me yeah um during that same battle though so we have captain america pick up thor's hammer which yes. is a huge moment i mean it happens again in the comics and it was alluded to in age of ultron it was when they're all going around the tables and they're all testing out who can do the hammers who can't which is cool nice of them to pay that off yeah um you also had a moment from the comics um with the a force that's it forget the name which is an all-female version of the avengers yes and you had that very I would say forced moment. It was very a forced. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, you know, it was a good moment, but they didn't really do much. I, fe- I felt like it didn't really do. It, it was very forced. It was very. It was like, pandering. I felt like they could. It, it if really they're going to do that, they could have done a lot more. It felt like they were just doing it because. They're they like, oh, like, all the females are together. Let's just yeah. put them together. Yeah, no, like, this will have a really good impact on on social media. <laughs> yeah, no, a lot of people were like, oh, we see right through it. You yeah. know, I, I, you know, you're just trying to get your feminist audience or your female audience to feel empowered, but really, what you did was just, you know, it was something off your checklist. Yeah, right of of, of your shot list basically. Um, but I wish, yeah, you're right. I do wish they put a little bit more thought into the A Force. However, you know, they have a lot more opportunity now to explore it. They do. Which... No, I think they will. I mean, uh, Brie Larson, mm-hmm. who um, obviously plays Captain Marvel, and we can get into a whole new debate on whether she was OP or not, because I think that's one definitely thing people were questioning was, would she be too overpowered for this movie? I don't think she was. I think she played it well, especially yeah. in moments where Thanos, she was fighting Thanos, and Thanos just rips the power stone out of the glove oh, yeah. in order to punch her in the face. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> it like, does. that knocks her out, so that's kind of cool. Um... But she alluded on social media recently to say that she would, I think, would be a great thing to do would be an A Force movie. Yeah. And I would, I would like to see it. I wouldn't. I, I would again, a comic oh, book yeah. movie. I'm not going to not see it, um, as long as it's done right and not just done like Ghostbusters was done or like Ocean Seven was done. Ocean's Eight. Where, Ocean's Eight where it was just kind of like we're only doing this just to have an all woman movie. Yeah. It's like there's precedent to do this because it's already in the comic books and there are actual superheroes are women, so it makes sense in that sense. Yeah. Um, and I'll go and see it no matter what. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Bat Thor. 
<laughs> yes, we did. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of... We, well, did, we, we didn't that, right? specifically say he was fat, but I guess... Oh, right. Okay. Well, yeah, no spoilers. <laughs> fat Thor. He's fat. Thor got thick. Um, T-H-I-C-C. <laughs> Two C's, my friend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and we know we have qualms with that. Um, there's other points I want to... Is there anything you want to bring? I've got some questions I want to pose to you around about as Thor. a fan. Well, about, no, we're not Thor, about just other things in the movie that kind I mean, of I, I do want to talk about Captain Marvel a little bit. Yeah, um, okay, we're on there now. Let's talk about that. As soon as we mentioned we lost yeah, I mean, I mean, personally, I thought the actress choice uh, could have been a little bit better. Uh, although, I mean, she did do an all right job, I think, you know, but she was very stone cold. You know, there was not yeah. much emotion in the way she... I, I guess became Captain Marvel, and I guess from watching the original the original movie, mm-hmm. right? Um, there's a lot of questions I have about that movie in particular. Oh yeah, we could do a whole podcast on just that movie. Oh no, definitely. All right, next podcast. Although guys. I feel like I'm going to get demonetized <laughs> from anything I do from then from then oh. onwards as a man. <laughs> I can't come in on that movie. It wasn't for me. <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean it wasn't okay. I don't think it has anything to do with female empowerment yeah, no, I know. because she's already been a character, right? Yes. Um, you know, in the in the Marvel universe, mm-hmm. I mean. Marvel's literally, literally named after her, kind of. Yes, in a way. well, Marvel, right? Mar-Vell. Captain Marvel. Exactly. That the thing. Yeah. But there has to be always that one superhero, super superhero, mm-hmm. you know? And she was the one for Earth because the Avengers are for Earth, the Earth Avengers, yep. right? And then that's where we kind of go into the whole galaxy, right? The Guardians of yeah, the Galaxy. Yeah, the lines the that she space. had. Exactly. Kind of alluded to that, right? Where she was saying, oh, well, you know. Yeah, like, Earth oh, has you're you only guys. one. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, you, you guys are only one planet out of the. Uh, you know, the billions, you know, in, yep. the, in the galaxy. Um, you know, anyway, back to her acting. Eh, it was okay. You know, she was kind of um, emotionless, I think, in her facial features. But I think because she was the super, super superhero, she mm-hmm. kind of had to be very neutral in comparison to a lot of the other characters who've had, you know, a bigger story buildup than she has. Okay, no, right? I can see that. And yeah. I think maybe you're right in saying that in Captain Marvel, she didn't really come up against anything that could stop her. She hasn't really yet until being punched by Thanos, I guess. <laughs> <I> <laughs> um, mean, or by a stone, really. Well, yeah, okay, not punched by Thanos, punched by a, a power stone. Anyone's exactly, going to get yeah. hit by that. I think what I would like to see if they do a second movie for her, if she gets that, because I heard it didn't do too well, but I'm sure she'll still get that anyway, yeah. is um, I actually see her come up against some struggle mm. rather than it be a movie, a movie all about empowerment and about how, you know, like at the end of Marvel, Captain Marvel, where... The guy goes like, come on, let's fight without powers, whatever. Show me, prove to me what you've got. And she's like, I don't have to prove anything to you, which is a great line. Yeah, I know. But it's almost like, Like, I'd love to see her actually come up and struggle against something and then overcome it rather than just be like, well, I'm all powerful from the beginning. Like from the beginning of that movie, she had her powers, she could use them. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to say that only because then it builds character. You're right in saying it's a Superman complex, which is why one reason why personally I don't like DC as much as Marvel is because you have someone like Superman in there, which is pretty much invulnerable. Really? Apart from one MacGuffin, which is like, oh, Kryptonite. It felt, that felt like a weak character to me. Obviously, rest in peace, whoever, (laughs) you know, (laughs) because of all the comics and everything. Like, I'm going to get absolutely killed for that. I know, that's why I'm a bigger (laughs) Marvel fan because I've never liked Superman as a character. Oh, interesting. Because he's too OP and it's like, you can do anything. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like that kid you have in high school who's all you, all you play a video game with, and he's always yeah. like you're imagining different things, and you're going, "Ah, oh, well, I'm throwing this spell at you or whatever," and the kid's like, "Oh, but I can overpower that because I have a, a, a shield or something." Uh, okay. and you're like, "Well, you're just making sh- stuff up now." Like, yeah, <laughs> like, but I mean, that's the, I feel like that's just the whole comic book, you know, DC yeah. versus Marvel, right? I personally, I like DC as a TV series better than I do Marvel, and the I way like that they execute it now. Yeah. yeah, and then I like Marvel movies better. But I find that DC characters are more easily relatable to to people okay. versus the Marvel characters. Because the Marvel characters are, you know, they're like gorgeous, first of all, right? Mm. They are beautiful people. But a lot of the DC characters, they're not really the, you know, the A-list actors. You know, they're kind of, yeah. they're, they're more relatable in the, in the look sense. And even their backstories, right? When you look at Joker, when you look at Batman, for example. Mm. Okay, not everyone relates to Batman, but we live in Hong Kong, so maybe more people relate to Batman in Hong Kong <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> than in other countries. Yes, the IOC has a big part to play in that movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I find, um, you know, just with that whole dynamic, um, especially with Joker, right? One of his backstories. Sorry to, like, kind of go off track. Yeah, we have gone off track. We'll come back. We'll come back. Um, but I think in terms of relatability, it's like, you know, the core value of family, right? Joker had a family. He got it taken away, and then he went insane. Well, it depends who you speak to, right? I mean, he has multiple. Exactly. Until the movie comes out. Ooh. 
But how many? But even that could be, exactly, <laughs> even that could be a paradox. But I just find that, yeah, DC characters are a little bit more relatable. Even though their their superpowers are kind of strange, but some of them, I think, especially in the Batman world, you know, Batman and Robin, they don't have superpowers. They just have gadgets, right? Kind of yeah. like Iron Man. You know, he's just a gadget guy, if you really think about yeah, it. Yeah, he has no superpowers himself. He has apart no superpowers. From, what does he say in the Avengers original ones? Like, I've got wealth, looks, and Yeah, I mean, charm, he was whatever. completely cocky. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah he is the whole time that's his character right yeah but that's his character and you know what people some people love it some people hate it yeah. i personally never liked iron man i i would agree i don't want to yeah we're gonna go too <laughs> off topic but i never loved him i mean seeing him massive spoiler seeing him die was oh, gosh. To, to bring it back look at that mm. wow we brought it back in yes we did to see him die at the end was it it, it, meant, it meant something yeah. And I'm I'm glad they did that. I'm glad they didn't just be like, oh, everyone survived, yeah. you know, Happy like ending. like hashtag spoilers, Game yeah. of Thrones season three, episode three. Um, <laughs> I'll do that one at you. Um, yeah, it was it was it was good that, that happened. But here's to, to bring it back into another question that I have, right? Yeah. In both Doctor Strange with Wu mm -hmm. at the end of the original Doctor Strange movie, and in Infinity War, people are brought back to life with the Time Stone who have just been killed. Yeah. Wu is brought back to life at the end of Doctor Strange by Doctor Strange, mm -hmm. just using the time stone like that, pretty simple. Yep. In Infinity War, Vision is brought back to life after he's been wiped off the face of the earth by um, his girlfriend. Mm. Right? Yeah. Just making sure I got that right. Why couldn't they do that to, to Iron Man then and there? Why couldn't Doctor Strange, who's there, just pick up the time stone and be like, Bloop. like bring him back. I'm glad that they didn't, but it's technically possible in their own I think universe. from a technicality standpoint, yes. Yeah. But the whole reason Iron Man died was because of, you, of, of that last snap. Of using the... Of using it. Yeah. So his body could not function anymore. So if you yeah. brought him back, wouldn't you have reversed the whole thing? Oh, the whole snap. Yeah, yeah. good point. But because his death was due to the fact that the stones overpowered his body. He wasn't, yeah. he, he wouldn't be able to control it because he's just a man, right? Mm -hmm. Like without his gadgets, who is he? Yeah. So that kind of brings, I think that ties it pretty well. You know, yeah, he that's died a good, for that reason. Okay, I'll accept that because I've been yeah. playing with that for a couple of days. It's been like, why couldn't you? <laughs> because I know that, not technically, obviously, because you can never get technical about this, but... Mm -hmm. If you have all the stones, you can do whatever you want. Now, it depends yeah. on if you look at comic book universe to what they obviously are restricted to do in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm -hmm. where they have kind of put restraints on what can and can't be done. But you can technically do whatever you want. You have every yeah. stone. You can make yourself invincible. Yeah. You could even say to the extent that he, when he clicked his fingers, he could have just done, he could have turned himself into a superhuman before doing it. They didn't do that. I'm, it was just weird for me that, that there was precedent for people being brought back to life by stones so they could have done it for him if if they really wanted to i'm glad they didn't because for me the story worked so much better that he died yeah and stayed dead um they had to tie it all up somehow right yeah they I did mean, they did many of the characters yeah and i actually thought captain america would die as well i mean he <laughs> he's he didn't verge. but he's basically <laughs> there <laughs> he's he's he for old natural, now for natural reasons right? yes yes exactly he will die <laughs> we, all, we all die it's one of those things yes for yeah. natural reasons um but there was that for me. It was kind of like, I, I, I was just, it does not do anything to the movie for me because I love the movie as it is. I was just thinking yeah. about it being like, you know, just, you know, there's a hole there. Um, but that does fill it somewhat. Okay. There is, speaking of that though, there's another continuity error I wanted to bring up, which is very minor. And I only see this because I saw it three times. <laughs> there's, there's, there's moments in the movie where you think so many people are working on this movie. How does someone miss this? Mm -hmm. But when they're testing out with Ant-Man, the time travel, yeah. Captain America, if you look at the cut between the view of, the of uh, Professor Hulk and Captain America using the equipment and then obviously back to the van and to Ant-Man as he's going back in and out of time. Captain America is jumping back and forth on the left and right side of Hulk, of yeah. Professor Hulk. And it's just for me, I only noticed it the third time, but it was weird. And, and obviously there's going to be mistakes in there. We're all human. I make so many mistakes in my life <laughs> <laughs> with writing and everything really? like that. I so. don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, just me. <laughs> just me. I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, so that was quite funny. Yeah. Other things, speaking of time stones, obviously at the end of the movie, I keep saying obviously, it's like my catchphrase. At the end of the movie, Captain America goes back in time to put the stones back, as we've discussed, that they have to go back at the exact same time that they took them. He takes those hammers with him. Maybe he, he loses mm -hmm. that in Asgard. If the time stone is put back in place, does that mean somehow that Doctor Strange in the, the present, it just appears on his chest? 
because like, like does the, it appear it's the paradox like again, well, yeah right because like Captain America as you said he they turn around and he's there as an old man yeah so technically in this universe then if they take the time stone back to New York during the first battle of the Avengers mm-hmm. it would just like appear around Doctor Strange's neck like that in the present because there's no way for him to get it back for the next movie if he's supposed to be the Sorcerer Supreme looking after it yeah although it was given he gave it away to Thanos in the original timeline in, in Infinity War so it's weird to think that those gems will just reappear on the people that technically should have them now or does he have to go and find it somewhere because yeah, she put it I in mean, a lockbox or something I mean, because so many things happen to each of the stones mm. in between, you know, um, the incident and, I guess, you know, the end of the post-Thanos world, right? Yeah. So what, you're right, what really happens? I mean, how do we, we'll never know. No, and I'm sure they'll find a way of explaining it. Doctor Strange 2 Maybe. is slated. Oh, so they is? are, okay. I don't think they're in pre-production. The only movies we know that are coming out after this so far are Spider-Man. Yes. And Guardians 3, which has been pushed back, mm-hmm. but it's in pre-production. Okay. Um, and then obviously there's a Black Widow movie, which has been... Oh. Well, here's the thing, right? So they, they talked about it, and obviously one of the biggest spoilers in the movie is that she dies, yeah. which will bring on to my next topic about Soul Stone. Um, she obviously dies to get the Soul Stone, yeah. which is weird. I did not see that coming, even up until the point where they were up on the cliff. I was like, oh, yeah, someone has to die. I totally forgot, and I was like... That they must have known that going in, like Nebula must have just been hiding that from them because she sent them both off yeah. to go get a soul stone and didn't be like, oh yeah, one of you guys is going to have to sacrifice yourself. When she was talking about the whole t- soul stone, yeah. she neglected to mention any of it apart from the fact like, oh, Thanos went there with my sister and came back on his own. So either she didn't know, I was like, really? Like, why would she just kill your sister? Anyway, so hmm. um, I like what they did with that, but then... With her movie being announced, it must be in the past. It must be like a retroactive movie. It must It must be before. I mean, it's definitely before the Avengers. I mean, yeah. even when she was recruited for the Avengers, like yeah. she was still, well, what was her name? Natasha Romanoff. Natasha Romanoff, right? yeah. yeah. Um, but I think going in, they didn't realize until, you know, the, the Reaper kind of dude was like, well, one of you has to die. Or like, one yeah. of, the biggest sacrifice has to be made. But I don't, I was, it was really interesting. I, I actually thought it was going to be her the whole time. I, I actually foresaw you thought she was when die? they were yeah I thought she was gonna die okay because she had nothing to lose so yeah. to speak right yeah because there's no point in bringing Barton back to help save his family and then go yeah now you have to die and not see your family exactly or yeah. like to be with your family after death right I mean that's, yeah I mean that's not what the the whole premise no, of getting everyone that. back was you know? we will get them back exactly and yeah. she had no family she had no I guess she she didn't really have a base I mean she kind of had Banner right but not really. Because he was not now, he he's way Professor over Hulk. His head. <laughs> well, that's, I don't know. I mean, we don't know what happens. With that. <laughs> I mean, we don't know, but um, yeah, I just, I, I just saw it right away. I was like, well, she has no one. He potentially will have his whole family back. Yeah, because from getting the stone, and you know, because they're such good friends, they've, you know, they were assassins together, was it, or whatever they were together. They were agents before. together, right? Agents, yes. Um, it was, it was kind of the right thing to do for her, for okay. for, for her being empathetic about his situation. And he's already been through so much, right? Yeah. You know, with the whole vigilante thing and, and Japan and whatever else. Yeah. So. And that got me as well. The music that they played during that scene is the same music they played in Infinity War what when Gamora it? died. And that was the biggest moment for me in, in Infinity War was when she, because I didn't see it coming. I was like, oh, like, I like, I like her. And I'm glad yeah. they brought her back, even though now obviously she has no memory of anything that happened. <laughs> Just sad because Guardians 2, she had some great scenes with Peter Quill. Um, yeah. Which brings me on to the Soul Stone just before we kind of wrap this up. They're putting stones back. Again, this is another one of my questions I have, a qualms I have with this. How do you put a soul stone back? Right? Because you've got to kill someone to get it or sacrifice someone to get it. So it's not like it's in existence somewhere you can just pluck yeah. it out of the sky. Yeah. When Captain America's putting them back, I just want to know the scene where he just turns up. One, he has to turn up and obviously come into contact with Red Skull, mm-hmm. which he hasn't seen Ever? since his battle. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. since his battle, because Red Skull was in the first of Amer- Captain America movie. He was, he was yes, the big bad. Sorry. So one is going to be a massive like, oh, this you. You're still alive and, and everything there. But yeah. two, like, how do you put it back? Or does it just dissolve when you don't need it? Like, I don't know. It's like Harry Potter, what's it? The um, thing that just turns up. The sword that just turns up whenever you need it or whatever it's called. Oh, the uh, Gryffindor sword. Yeah, it was all the door. Like the door oh, the, with oh, everything the, in it. The room of... Requirement. Room of requirement. Yeah. It was in the name, right? <laughs> yeah, like because that was just for me. Like, okay, well, how do you put a soul stone back? Okay, so, what does a soul stone do? 
like when you have the stone alone, mm. what does it do? So it you have power over living beings, I think. And now I'm going to get this so a little bit wrong. So you can control people's being and and love and likes and that kind of thing, or also life in itself, like right? Their so feelings. Yeah. Interesting. Which is why I think it's used when used with the other power stones. I should really know this, but I don't. I haven't got something to bring it up. Yeah. Well, we can Google it really quickly. What a soul stone does. <laughs> what um, does a soul stone do? What is it? But they like there was this big for me. It's like how was he going to put it back some somewhere? Yeah. I think. Well. Let me just quickly Google. See, that's this. that's a whole time travel paradox, right? I feel like. I will hear. Allows the user to steal, control, manipulate, and alter living and dead souls. So they are. It, so then, in itself, that could bring people back from the so dead. You, yeah. So, so time and soul stone could bring people could, back. That's how you bring people back from the dead, using them in con conjunction. Um, which again comes back to a theory which kind of, to me at least relates back to the comic books, is yeah. when people in the snap happen, they all go into the soul stone and they're just kept inside there in this weird world inside the soul stone. Mm. Which is where we could lead on to Guardians 3 because at the end of Guardians 2, we saw Adam Warlock's pod yeah. in the post credit scene. And yep. originally he has the soul stone, they use it in his head instead of visions. So they've yep. done something differently there. But then it's like, okay, well, then originally then was Gamora, because you see her with Thanos inside the Soul Stone as a kid. You do, yeah. In Infinity War. So I was thinking, okay, well, is Black Widow then inside the Soul Stone now? So she technically could be still be alive if you have the Soul Stone. And is there a way to reverse that some way where maybe when Adam Warlock comes around, he can, he can do that or figure that out. Maybe. maybe they won't ever do that. And I'm fine if they don't. Yeah. But it's just these weird questions of like, how do you put it back? What happened when Captain America met up with Red Skull again, yeah. which he inevitably would have done? <laughs> Um, like well here you go yeah I mean I know uh, right, we've got five minutes left to talk about this I've got so much yeah. more I could potentially talk about is oh, there yeah. anything else I mean that for me the soul stone and the time stone those kind of things I really wanted to talk about because to me they're kind of like thought starters is there anything for you that else you wanted to talk about before we kind of wrapped up uh, I mean we've pretty much talked about all the characters Ant-Man yeah Captain America Honestly, there's, I mean, there's so much more to talk about, right? But there is. Definitely I could talk it's, for It's really for weeks. interesting to end on on <clears throat> the time stone and the soul stone. Yeah. You know, I think, I think just you know going back after, I'm definitely gonna do a little bit more research on the on the on the two and how they how they would work, and then of course you know all the post credit scenes. I think there's a lot of post credit scenes that you know that were not addressed, although a lot of them were in this movie. Yeah. From the main Avengers, but then when you go into Guardians, when you go into and, and the last Guardians movie with the there was five four or five different scenes, right? Of different characters. Yes. You know, you see Rocky. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sylvester Stallone, sorry. I call him Rocky. You see Sylvester Stallone. You see, um, you know, Sean Gunn, James Gunn's yep. uh, brother as, you know, trying to control the, the little arrow thing. Mm -hmm. Cause, so you know, what's, yeah, we, I mean, I'm, I'm looking I mean, forward so to what's much. happening in that. Yeah, there's so much that happens after Guardians. You know, with, with how they ended Endgame. Yeah. With, as Guardians of the Galaxy, right? I, I think there's just more. The to ask the Guardians. That's the all, ask all I could think of was like <laughs> protecting Rump everywhere in the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, I think just from that, that's just kind of where you zoom out of Earth and you're like, okay, there's way more. Well, yeah. I mean, so for me, a couple of things just quickly. I would love to see them do Nova, who is another superhero like Captain Marvel, yeah. and he comes from the whole idea that he's the last surviving member of the Nova Corps. Those people who are on Xandar from the Guardians One. Yeah. And obviously Thanos has to go and take the power stone from Xandar. So I would love it if they had a scene somewhere where Thanos is just destroying Xandar and nobody survives apart from one dude and he becomes Nova, who is the superhero in that sense. And I know that they talked about doing a Nova movie a couple of years ago, so I'd love to see that. Yeah. The other thing is blah, 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 Guardians 3, obviously, and what they'll do with Adam Warlock. I'd love to see them. I can't wait for that movie. You just say the Ask Guardians of the Galaxy. I want that on a shirt, just Ask Guardian. Um, <laughs> But for, okay, so I have a section at the end, just before we wrap this up completely, is what we recommend people can read or at least check out based on this stuff, based on the post credits that we've analyzed here. For me, with that said, I think you'd be interested in reading the Infinity Gauntlet comic book series. Yes. Which is where they took a lot of reference from and it talks about all these stones. I, I've got yeah. it, I can lend it to you. Yeah, great, definitely. great comic book run. Everyone should check that out, Infinity Gauntlet, because mm -hmm. it has Silver Surfer, it has the X-Men, it has all of those characters in it, because it's Marvel, oh, right? They can, yeah. all, they can do everything. And it's great. It has Adam Warlock on the stones. And it kind of plays that similar way, only it's, it's um, Nebula that picks the gauntlet at the end, not Iron Man. And what she then does yeah. with it to then defeat her father because she's so pissed at him. <laughs> um, and then obviously I would recommend going to see Detective Pikachu. It's out in two weeks. We can probably go and see it together. And it's, you know, yes. if I'm sure you're as interested as I am. Mm -hmm. um, go check out Detective Pikachu. No affiliation, no sponsorship. Um, 
Anything else you want to? Anything else you want to say? Uh, Twitch TV slash Denverly. <laughs> <laughs> Had to plug that in there. <laughs> but no, I, I think um, no, I think you know this was a really really interesting conversation. I just I like I feel like we could talk about this all day all night. I feel um, like we will. I mean, hopefully you'll be back on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, next no, time I'm we're going to keep this going. It. We'll have different people coming in and out. Yeah. Um, I'm hopefully going to maybe see the movie again at some point. I, I up, actually really want to watch it again. I yeah. found the perfect way. 3D was best to see it, I think. Really? Definitely than 2D. I did, I did yeah. like the experience 3D. I did. I, I normally don't choose 3D, but I feel no. like in the first, or this, I guess the, the second scene where you know Iron Man is kind of saying goodbye, before, mm. right before Captain Marvel. Oh, that's space. Yeah, that, that was, was an incredible beautiful. 3D scene. That was painted so well. Was like those beautiful. Kind of scenes. That's the thing. I have, this, I, I have this whole thing about you know astronomy and everything, right? Like, oh. it's, like the stars and the galaxy and space, time travel, all You're to find that wallpaper. Stuff. There'll be a wallpaper of that somewhere. No, No, the best wallpaper. All right, guys. The best wallpaper <laughs> is when Hulk is sitting in the back of the pickup yes. truck going to yes. as New Asgard. Was it New Asgard? Yes. New Asgard, New Asgard yeah. which is in Norway. Mm -hmm. With, um, what's his name? The little Rocket. Rocket. With little Rocket. Who was my favorite character the whole movie? Oh, I love this guy. I mean, him. He's, well, those two he's together so actually. Sassy. Yeah, he was he's sassy. Sassy. He was um, cool. No, that is probably the best, the best wallpaper. Okay. I need to make that my wallpaper. Well, I'm sure that that'll be out there. You could find that. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so uh, don't miss the next post credits podcast. Hopefully, in another two weeks' time, we'll be talking about Detective P Detective Pikachu and any other announcements that have come up. Mm -hmm. um, have a great one. Remember to follow Talent Esports on Instagram, Facebook. Follow Dennis on, on Twitch. Um, <laughs> plug, plug, plug. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's a goodbye for me and uh, I love you 3000. I love you 3000. Join the army